So let's share the screen and go into InDesign. So first of all, before we go into InDesign, I want to show you, I prepared a folder for you guys. So let's say I want to, um, I want to actually uh, import into InDesign this uh, file. So this file, as you can see, has a lot of layers, right? You can see that. And it's actually a pretty simple file. It's a self-portrait of a student. Um, it's, it's just drawn, simply drawn. And when I was used to teach Photoshop and drawing in Photoshop. Uh, but if you look at how big is this file, it will show you that it's 29.8 megabytes. And you remember that I told you clearly how whenever you do an interactive PDF, you're going to bring into these 30 pages PDF or whatever it becomes a lot of images. So the images needs to be the smallest that they can be. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge, huge file, and that's not going to be good. So what I suggest you do whenever you have an image like that is think about your InDesign document. Whenever you create an InDesign document, in fact, let's create it together. I wanted to show you, by the way, before we create one, how one looks like. So this is a brochure I did for the plant conservatory that was looking for um, uh, artists to create their display for these beautiful greenhouses as a, as a um, uh, institute in campus that has these beautiful rare plants. So what happens here is you can see that I just created a series of pages and you can see them right here, right here. You can see that is my pages palette. So this was just to show you how a design document is going to look, right? But all these, these images, I actually went in and scaled them to be really small. So if I go in InDesign right now and, and start, for example, your document, you know, your, your portfolio, I'm going to do it as slightly differently than what Nick tells you to do. I would go for web right here. When you go, do, go file new, I would choose the web option because when you should choose the print option and the, for example, letter, even if you say letter and uh, landscape, what, when you do the print, it has this option that says facing pages. And what facing pages means, you probably have, have you have seen books and brochures. This is facing pages is when you generally have a fold right in the middle and you have on both sides images, something that you will never need in an online document because there is no folding in online and on the screen. Right. So what I generally do when I start anything interactive is I start from web. You can notice that the, the, the facing pages is gone now and I generally choose a preset that is the standard um, uh, most common screen resolution that is 1024 by 768 uh, doc, uh, is the document. Uh, file um, new and choose web, you can choose any of these formats. Be aware that 640 by 480 is gonna be too small because it's gonna turn out really, really small if you wanna fill the entire screen. 1024 by 768 would be great or something a little bit, tiny bit smaller if you wanna keep it a little bit smaller than the more common screen size. I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna choose, for example, 10 pages. So all I did for now is in InDesign, file new and I chose web and I chose this format and I'm gonna say create. And here we are. Now notice these are the margins. Margins are not printable. They're just to guide you to stay kind of far away from the edges if you want to. Now notice in here, I actually went all the way to, to the edges. I, I completely ignore the margin. I'm hitting W right now. W makes it that you can see the working you know, boxes, the frames, or you don't if you hit W again. And so you notice that here I completely ignored the, the, the margins. Now, by the way, this is a simple stroke that I, just, I simply give it at 11 points and I give it this kind of straight hash line uh, style. If I chose that Japanese dots, it would look like this. So just to let you know that sometimes you can achieve quite a bit with something very simple. So once you go in here, let's say you're, you're ready to go and you wanna bring in images. Now, if you bring in that file that I showed you earlier in Photoshop, this one, you're gonna bring in 29 megabytes of data. So what I suggest you do instead is you go under image, image size, and you know, right now you know, because we just created it in design, that if you're doing a on-screen PDF, the maximum height that we just chose is 768 pixels. So right now you can see that this image is too big. 
is first of all, we don't need 264 in resolution, 72 is fine, right? And now we start reasoning here. We start seeing that 745 is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna say, okay. So another thing I can do is I can go and say layer flatten image right here. And that will make the, all these layer will go away and it will say, do you wanna uh, discard the hidden layer? Sure, no problem. Now I'm gonna go and say file save as, so I can leave the original alone. And I'm gonna call it, I already tell you I did it in my prior class. I called it underscore S in my prior class. Let me call it underscore test or, or actually 72 DPI or PPI. There we are, because that's a 72 right, in resolution. So I'm gonna say save. So now I can totally close this file because I scaled it and I, I took care of it. By the way, you could have color corrected it and done all kinds of other stuff if you needed. And I wanna show you how big is this file. It's 527 K byte from 29 megabytes. So let's insert both and see if there is any loss of quality. Cause you might tell me, hey, look, maybe the, the bigger file is better you know, in quality. So let's do command D that allows you to bring in the files. And it's telling me it was saving Photoshop with that. Uh, say, okay, don't worry. It's telling me that there was something happening in Photoshop when this file was created. So this is the 29 megabytes one. I'm gonna do the same thing with the one we just saved that is 500K. So half the size of a meg one megabyte. So let's look at them and tell me guys, do you see a loss of quality? I would say no, I cannot see it. I absolutely cannot see it. Uh, maybe a tiny bit if we zoomed in dramatically, let me zoom in a whole lot. There is a tiny bit of, this one looks a tiny bit more pixelated, maybe, tiny bit. So I could kind of finagle with it to, you know, make it look, you know, instead of shrinking it so much, shrinking it a little bit less. But in the bigger picture, you're going to barely be able to see it. I mean, see the difference, to be honest. So be kind of aware that you can obviously play with it more, but just on the bare bones, simple, you know, lets me just remove the layers and uh, uh, make the resolution compatible with an online document, you can see that you can do a whole lot. By the way, if you had brought in the image as big and you needed to reduce the size and you, and you realized that later, you can always go under window links right here because everything, every image in InDesign is gonna be linked. And you can select that image and go in here and say edit original or edit width and choose Photoshop and edit that image in Photoshop, do everything we did earlier. And when you hit save, it will automatically save in InDesign. Now, obviously the problem is that you're changing the original. That's kind of can be a problem. That is why I suggest you do your um, sizing, color correcting, everything else prior to bringing it into InDesign. If you watch the videos from last week, you know that in InDesign we have, in InDesign, sorry, we have a container a frame, you see, I'm just shrinking the frame and it becomes a cookie cutter for the image or command Z, I can use the white arrow and select the image. And actually if I move it, you can see I'm moving the image. Again, the frame becomes a cookie cutter. So if you wanna somehow scale it a little bit smaller because you want a header above it that says project four or whatever it needs to say, you can select it with the black arrow, choose auto fit, and then click and drag with the shift click key and so that it doesn't get the form and scale it to the size that you need it to be. So keep that in mind. You can obviously add some text. You can say, hey, look, I'm gonna you know, go with my text box, click and drag, command D, and I'm gonna actually go and browse. Actually, I could, I could have typed text or I could bring it in through command D that is file place and browsing to a certain document. So right now it's telling me, do you want me to, in that document, do you want to make sure that I include a footnotes, end note, end notes, table of content, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to say, okay. And as you can see, I just imported my document. Now, something weird happened though, that is pretty natural. If you look, now it says I have an error down here that I didn't before. 
because my document has something called overset text. If you pay attention, when you select this box, has a little plus sign down here, right? I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it right there. And what that means is that there is, the text is, is actually part of the text did not fit in the box and is hidden. So by the way, if you see one error, there is actually a bad sign and you really want to fix it. If you have a very long document and you don't know where it is, InDesign is very sweet because if you click on this arrow and choose pre-flight, you can go in and even if it's closed, you can open it all up and click on, the on, on here and it shows you the page that has the problem. And how do you fix that problem? You go with, since what is necessary is that we move some of the content to a different page. So we're acting on the content. I need to use the white arrow. Remember the black arrow has to do with a container, selects the container. The white arrow selects the content. So I'm gonna click with a white arrow on this little plus and it will load my cursor with that text. And then I click and drag and all of a sudden you can see that there are no errors anymore. So you basically bring content into InDesign after you obviously prepared it, like you made this one smaller. And in this case, you can obviously go with your text tool, just like you did in Illustrator. You, you double click or triple click, by the way, allows you to select the whole line. If I have a, um, a paragraph, I actually quadruple click and it will select the entire paragraph. Or I do Command A and selects the entire text and then I can go in here and say, okay, I want it to be Avenir book. I want it to be size 12. I want to have a, a line spacing or a letting of 22 and et cetera, et cetera. So you can format your text just the way you did in Illustrator. In fact, you can use the same shortcut that is option arrow keys to increase the letting or decrease the letting, increase the tracking or decrease the tracking and et cetera, et cetera. So you can use the same beautiful shortcuts that we used in Illustrator or Photoshop for the matter. So once you formatted your text, you have the images looking spiffy and just the best possible size for your document in design document. If it says no errors right here, then the next step is to package this document. What this means is at this precise moment, even if I say file save and I save this document as test, for example, test, I have test, for example, inside of this, sorry, folder right here somewhere that is test right here, but it's a loose document. It means if I take this test, test and, I, and I email it to someone, all the links, you know, the link to the image is, is broken. There is really just one image as a link. So I would have a broken link. So how do I, how do I avoid that? In InDesign, after I did my save, I go and say file, package, and it will ask you to save it again, by the way. Now make sure you do the package only if it says no errors down here. Only if it says no missing links, zero missing links. Uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, here you can see the font that were used, the images that were used and et cetera, et cetera. So here there is a bit of a summary. And when I say package, it will ask you to save it. So I'm gonna, and, and it's gonna tell you, how do I call it? And it generally calls it with the name of the file plus the word folder. So I encourage you to do that, to just leave it alone, whatever you want to do. You could say include PDF and it will make a PDF of this document but it will make a PDF for print. And next class, I'll teach you about liquid layouts and HTML and how to make it in design document turn into beautiful uh, web layouts and liquid layouts and quote. But for now, just leave the default alone and say package. And now you'll see that it's telling you, listen, all the fonts will be copied inside this folder, but is up to you what you do with the fonts. That means they don't want to obviously be sued if you're giving the fonts away, even though those, those fonts should be sold or something. So you say, okay. And now when I go into that folder, instead of having my test loose like this, I can open up this beautiful folder and I find the test again with the links. Yeah, we have only one with the fonts. 
So you can see that now everything is nice and tight inside this folder. And you should always, at the end of the day, when you're done with the work, do the packaging and then start the following time you work on your project from this document, because you know everything is going to be in that beautiful little folder. And every time, though, more, the more files you bring in, the more you will have to every time remember to package it, because otherwise you end up with broken link. So last piece of information is, OK, you did these six layouts. So let's say this is one of them. And you need to turn it in. You want to go and say export. And at this point, to be honest, they're not probably interactive. They're just a design thing. So it doesn't matter if you do print or interactive. Just leave it as print for now. It doesn't matter. Because for the moment, you're just turning in for the deadline of uh, Sunday. You're just turning in these design layout. You're not turning in anything that already has buttons and stuff. If it did, you obviously would want to say interactive. But it's up to you. Either one works. I'm going to stay with print right now because I know there is nothing in there that needs interactivity. So let's say you're going to call it layout cover. This is this is a cover page. Page. And I'm going to call it option A because I'm going to have an option A and option B, right? We have to have two options. And I'm going to say say save. Sometimes what I do is I save it in the same folder. So everything is in one folder, but it's up to you. And it's going to tell you how you want it. For the matter of this layout, it does not, it doesn't matter much. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to leave the default that I have my own default, I know, but I recommend you just leave what's there because as I said, for the matter of this um, deadline, it's just a matter of seeing, you know, what you produce. As you can see, there is my, my PDF. So that's what you need to do for uh, a Sunday six times, and obviously with design work involved. Uh, let me stop the um, uh, sharing and stop the recording and ask if you have any questions.